Good evening and salutations my Days of Allah's fans. So, start with Kayla and Roth. Kayla is a cautionary tale because she has got to be the worst hostage I've ever seen in my life. The whole time that Roth is going on and on about Stefan Stefano and, you know, help. by the way, his plan is to clone. Somebody actually said in the comments, somebody was, well, they were right. Um, you know, his plan is to clone Stefano. And, yeah, he's planning on using um, Kayla as a surrogate. So his whole plan, you know, I was talking about cloning and stuff like that and bringing him back. And Kayla's all like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to help him. I'm a doctor, this, that, and the third. And I took an oath, and you're not getting me to do it. No, 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 no. Somebody want to remind this woman that he has a gun? That he took her there by force with using a gun? That gun didn't disappear. I don't know where this high and mighty attitude of, no, I'm not going to do it comes from. I, I just... For a person who is supposed to be a doctor, who's supposed to be smart, I swear, I feel like sometimes the smartest people can say and do the dumbest things. And Kayla is a perfect example of that thing. Um, so, you know, all her nose and everything like that. Ralph is like, oh, okay, cool. So, I mean, you're no use to me. So, Ralph decides to take out a needle. To stick her with it. I'm assuming that's going to kill her. And I'm sitting there thinking. Did, did Rob forget that he had a gun? What's the point of trying to get close to her. To use a needle. He has a gun. I don't I don't really understand. What, what was the point of that? <laughs> I'm, I'm literally just. Even now I'm still baffled by that. But um. That was a thing. Um. So at this point, Kayla's like, oh, okay, cool, I'll do it. I mean, the whole time she's sitting there trying to... The, the, the thing is, Kayla's sitting there trying to outsmart a guy who is probably old enough to be a father. And you're not going to be able to outsmart this guy. That's just not going to work. Um... You know, she tries to do the whole psychoanalyzing, and, you know, you can do stuff for the better of mankind. I'm like, mm-hmm, 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 okay. I'm pretty sure he's, like, five steps ahead of you, but no, please, go right ahead. Waste your breath, that's that's fine by me. Um, I mean, we got an hour to kill, so, I mean, why not? Um, but, yeah, you know, she's like, I'll agree to do it, and, you know... And then that's when Roth is like, okay, cool, so we're going to need a surrogate. And, you know, Kayla's like, well, who are you going to sit there and find and be a surrogate? <laughs> I get it. I know it. I know it's a soap opera, and they got to ask dumb questions like that. But, I mean, the guy just said that I need a woman to be a surrogate. Do you honestly think he's just going to just find some random woman on the street when he has one right there? I swear... I feel like you can just sit there and look at this. And if you can just put a laugh track where stuff that just doesn't seem like it makes any sense, it could be turned into a comedy. Um, and yeah, so his plan is to try to use um, um, <sighs> Kayla as a surrogate. Now Steve and Roman are, I'm, I'm not going to lie, just kind of a filler at this point. Because all they're doing is trying to find a way to find Kayla. And, um, you know, looking through, you know, um, security footage and stuff like that. I, I'm not going to lie. It, I, you know, I, I love Stephen all, and I guess it's cool to see Roman again, but their scenes were absolutely, like, there was really no point to their scenes. I don't even know if they actually even found an idea of where she was, so I'm just not even going to really bother to talk about them too much, because... I don't think they really did anything productive. Now, speaking of people who actually done something productive, um, productive, Kate. Kate, 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 Kate. 
So, you know, Clyde and his wackadoo plan of, you know, giving Ben, um, the baby to make him feel better, because that's gonna work. Um, I mean, seriously, what kind of retarded plan is, whatever. Um, so Kate sees him, and, you know, realizes that it's Henry, and he do the standoff of, you know, don't hurt the baby, and, you know, Clyde's like, oh, well, I'm gonna hurt the baby if you get closer, or whatever. But then the baby starts crying, and, um, he tries to, you know, rock the baby, this, that, and the third, and it does, it just doesn't work, you know? Because the baby has an ear infection, so it doesn't matter what anyone does, this baby's just gonna keep crying. Um, from my understanding of children, um, even though I don't have any children, but whatever. Um, my point is, you know, Clyde can't get the baby to calm down, so Kate offers to help. And after this back and forth, you know, he agrees. And so Kate's in it there, you know, trying to rock the baby and stuff like that. And, you know, she's sitting down rocking the baby and stuff. And, um, you know, the baby still has not stopped crying. So Kate's like, you know, listen, I mean, just get a pacifier out of my out of my bag. I'm just not there thinking the whole time. I was like, you know, I'd be really interested if Kate just had a gun with her, you know? But, I mean, why would Kate just have a gun, just walking around Salem with a gun, I mean, it, it really doesn't make any sense, I mean, pepper spray, maybe, I can, I can see that, but a gun? Nah. But it'd be really cool if she had one. Because then she could just really take care of it. And then out of nowhere, she pulls out a gun, and we're like, wow, I, I, I didn't see that one, <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Um, so yeah, she pulls out a gun, and she points it at him, and I'm sitting there thinking, uh, at this point, I'm thinking that we all know how this is going to go. They're going to talk, they're going to talk, he's going to get closer, he's going to take the gun away, I'm going to sit there and say this, I'm going to do that, like, yeah. You know, because that's what typically happens in these movies and shows and these standoff, standoffs, whatever. And, um, you know, at one point, Claude's is like, alright, listen, you're not going to shoot me. So, I mean, just, just come on, let's just, let's, let's just, you know, just put down the gun, you're not going to shoot me. And he proceeds to walk up closer to take the gun. I'm sitting there thinking, you're not going to actually shoot him, you're just going to let him just take the gun. And then she shoots and it was like, oh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I, I, I really didn't see that coming. Uh, she just shoots him. I gotta sit there and say, you know what, bravo to Dave's. I don't think a scene would have really played out like that on GH. I mean, they just cut straight to the point. <clears throat> Listen, I know everyone knows at this point how I feel about GH and Dave's and stuff like that. And GH I more or less kind of grew up with. Um, but Dave's, I mean, when they, when they need to get something done and not really kind of fiddle around with it, they just get it done. <laughs> In this episode, they just got it done. So, on that note, yeah. Um, props to today's. Um, so, yeah, she shoots him and then the scene ends. Uh, let's go with Marlena and um, Marlena John, Orpheus' son that I have no idea who his name is. Um, so, you know, they're doing the standoff or whatever, and, you know, Orpheus and his son talk, and, you know, to try to get him to, to go on the run and stuff. And, you know, when he's not being too receptive, you know, everyone's sitting there thinking, well, you know what, Orpheus is going to sit there and come through with his part of the deal, and it's going to be for nothing. So the son agrees to go on the run, take the son, take his son, and they just be one happy family on the run or whatever. And at this point, you know, because in the beginning, John was like, so what about my part of the plan? And at first, Roth was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And he points a gun. I was like, bro, really? But then again, then again I'm sitting there thinking, you know what? I could sit there and be like, oh, you know what? You double-crossed him. But I was like, you know what? You're a bad guy. So... In our reality, if you didn't actually play the part of the bad guy, then what's really the point? Um, 
but the son convinces him to go on a run. And just as John is about to sit there and tire of Marlena, you know, because Ruff, um, Orpheus, Jesus Christ, I think I said Ruff like twice, my bad. Orpheus is like, you know, listen, when we're on a run, because John, you know, like, listen, we'll give you some money and you can just, you know, you're going to need money on a run. Tell us where he's at. And he thought about it, and I think that's what also changed his mind. So Orpheus is like, listen, I'll give you the directions. I'll give you, you know, how to find your son or your grandson when I'm in the clear. And then the son knocks him over the head, um, Orpheus over the head with, I don't know, a paint can or something. So at this point, they're free. But they're, you know, John and Mar Marlene are there hugging. And they're there wondering, you know, how are we going to sit there and find, um, like, how are we going to get him to talk? Because right now he's unconscious. And then at some point they turn around and that guy is gone. Um, Orpheus' son is gone. Which in reality isn't... I don't want to sit there and say it's not that important. I mean, he did do some bad stuff from what I understand. But um, he seems like he's trying to turn his life around. So I don't know if he's going to just be like, I don't know, picking up when it, where his dad left off or anything like that. So, But he's off in the wind. So, yeah. And yeah, that's literally about it. <laughs> I want to make sure, like I always, you know, I wouldn't make sure that I didn't really forget anything. And if I did, I apologize. I don't think the stuff with um, Steve and um, Roman was really that interesting because they didn't really do anything. I mean, yeah, they were spent there searching, but like, I don't feel like they really contributed, like contribute to the episode as far as trying to find Kayla or anything like that, so it was just more padding, and I'm not really a fan of padding, but I understand it is what it is, so with that being said, um, that's going to do it. Um, I'm going to get ready for my dentist appointment, and if anyone that actually watches this, um, watch my reviews for GH, um, it's probably going to be a little bit after because i got to wait for the Novocaine to wear off and the numbness to stop being numb. And, uh, you know, get ready for my root canal. Um, with that being said, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Um, was you surprised that Kate just shot Clive? I mean, I was. I'm not going to lie. I know in a, t a lot of these typical, like, type of shows, they're about to shoot him and then he just take the gun away or whatever. But when he shot it, when she shot it, I was like, oh, wow. He actually got to the point. I mean, it took an hour, but they got to the point. Whoa, just days. You sometimes surprise me. But let me know what your thoughts are on this episode in general. Thank you for watching. I will catch you in the next review.